Today's topic of discussion is going to be DLP and in short, it stands for Data Loss or Leakage Prevention. Let's start. The topic we're going to cover today are what is DLP? DLP solution provides visibility into what kind of services? The types of DLP? The main causes of DLP or data leakage? And then DLP policy rollout best practices. So you now you might have heard about the term DLP or data loss prevention in your organization a lot. But what does it really mean? What does it really do? Basically, data loss prevention is a part of your organization's long-term security strategy that focuses on detecting and preventing the loss or leakage or misuse of data through breaches, exfiltration, transmission, and unauthorized use. The job of DLP is to make sure that the data or the information that has been properly classified to begin with does not go out of your organization. And if it does go out of your organization, it stays only within the intended recipients. So remember the word exfiltration. Now, it is very important to know why are we even using DLP? So it's got three main uses that we are going to discuss. First is the data in use, that is securing the data that is being used right now in your memory. How do you secure that? It's securing the data that is being used by the application or endpoint through user authentication and access controls. Next is the data in motion that is ensuring the safe transmission of sensitive, confidential and proprietary data while it moves across the network through encryption and other email and messaging security measures. So data in motion is the first line that ensures that the safe transmission of sensitive and confidential data. Third, data at rest. This is the data stored in your hard drive or on a server that is protecting the data that is being stored on the network location, including your cloud, through access restriction and user authentication. This ensures that unauthorized access to your data at rest can be prevented using a DLP solution. Hope that was clear. Now, the most important part of the video is probably this. What are the three types of DLP and in other words, where it can be deployed? First, network DLP. It monitors and protects all data in use, in motion and at rest in your organization's network, including the cloud. So basically, it tracks and analyzes your organization's network traffic and activity across your traditional network and the cloud. Secondly, endpoint DLP. Its job is to monitor all the endpoints, that is your servers, computers, laptops, even mobile phones, and any other device on the network where the data is being moved or saved. It also assists in classifying regulatory, confidential, proprietary, or even business critical data in order to streamline reporting and compliance requirements. So that's basically what Endpoint DLP does. And the third one, that is Cloud DLP. This is the one that is hot nowadays. It's a subset of your network DLP. It's not separate, it's just a subset or an extension elsewhere. It is specifically designed to protect organizations that leverage cloud repositories for their data storage. So your cloud DLP will scan and audit the data on the cloud to automatically detect and encrypt sensitive information before it is admitted and stored in the cloud. Now, the next question that you might even ask is, beside having the data leakage prevention or DLP, what are the main causes that the data still leaks out outside of your organization? I'll give you three reasons why. First is exfiltration. This is the act of stealing or transferring data from a device or network to the outside. It can be conducted by outsiders or even sometimes insider threats who are performing cyber attacks like phishing and DDoS. 
Next is insider threat. As the word already suggests, insider threats are especially dangerous because the attack comes from within. They are inside your organization. Insiders include company employees, former employees, contractors, or even business associates. Third is negligence. This is kind of most important here because many times breaches occur due to employee negligence or that of any third party. There are a number of reasons why this can happen such as having a weak security policy or procedure, poor cybersecurity training program, and not applying the proper lease privilege policy which your DLP solution should implement by default. Now, there are some DLP best practices that you can follow to protect your organization's assets and keep the problems at bay. Given the complexity of today's threat landscape and the sprawling nature of your corporate network, the first step is to implement a proper DLP policy. First is to classify and prioritize your data. This means that for an organization to better protect its sensitive information, you should know exactly what it is that you're protecting. As best practice, organizations should perform the data audits and inventory to more easily classify and prioritize its data. Secondly, Align with organization security architecture. Now, in designing and implementing a DLP solution, it is important for an organization to consider existing security measures, such as firewalls and monitoring systems that could be leveraged as a part of its new capability. Your organization should always ensure that the DLP solution is fully integrated with your company's cybersecurity architecture. Next is to establish a regular cadence of security review. Now, what do I mean by that? Like new features, capabilities and functions are often added to a solution regularly. You should always evaluate test and implement rollout plans for new capabilities that reach the market. Leaving everything at default is basically a disaster or a recipe for failure. Make sure that you adapt your tool to the changing environment and your organization's policies. Next is to establish a change management guideline. This means that a configuration that is agreed upon should be documented and audited multiple times a year. It depends on your organization's bandwidth and the people allocated to it. The information security team should frequently discuss configurations and new features with vendors and supporting teams to maximize the tool's value and validate its use in the organization's environment. And lastly, to take regular audits and adversary emulation exercises. This ensures that your DLP solution is working as intended. For example, try sending a few non-sensitive files outside the organization, obviously in a controlled environment, and check whether your DLP solution is working according to your organization's classification and policies. I hope that was clear. Okay, with that I'll come to an end of this video on DLP. This was just a brief introduction on what DLP is and what it can do for your organization. And if you'd be so inclined, feel free to reach out to me at the email address given below in the video. If you need any cybersecurity consultations or trainings, I'll be more than happy to help you with that one as well. Alright, with that I'll go ahead and end this video. Do share it with your family and friends whom you would think would benefit from this video. I hope you all have a great day ahead. Bye now.